First layer great, second layer looks like crap, a Bamboo Lab P1S that's a little bit angry, and melted clothing. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 122. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here and you might be struggling with some 3D printing issues, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. We are now 122 weeks deep into helping you get back to printing with purpose, and if you have any issues that you're dealing with on your machine, you can reach out to us by DMing us on social media platforms or emailing us directly, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. Links, of course, to everything in that description down below. We have some interesting issues today, including one that happens when carelessness and lack of patience gets the best of you. It happens to uh, all of us at some point where we do get hurt from our machines. This one could have been a lot worse. So let's jump right into fixing where your first layer looks great and your second layer just doesn't. Perfect first layer, but then this happens. So Ender 3 V3 SE, Esun PLA Plus Black dried 21065.24 layer height 0.98 extrusion 0.8 retraction 0.1 lift print is the top of a turntable 10% infill cubic first off good information thank you for that this as far as I can tell is temperature when you have especially black and white filament they have so much dye in them that they often need more heat especially black because of its thermal emissivity 210 for PLA plus is pretty low. I'd look at running it closer to 220 or even 225. This is where temp towers would be the absolute perfect thing to do. And honestly, if you do start to see this, let's just crank the temperature out of pure precaution. The only real bad thing you can do when you slowly turn up temperature is you might cause some stringing as the material goes beyond its ideal temperature and starts getting into the temperature where it's a little bit less happy. With the SE, it is not clipperized and unless they've added clipper to it or input shaping in general, that would be the KE version for reference. But unless they've done it themselves, this printer is gonna run relatively normal stock speeds. So you would absolutely need to turn this up if you were running high speeds. If you're not running high speeds, Turn it up a little bit, try 215 and maybe try 220 and see if that works itself out as you're printing. I know it can be a bit of a pain in the butt, but let's think about it from a perspective of the printer. First layer, beautiful, perfect. Why? Because first layers are slow. We go to the second layer, it's much faster and therefore we have to turn up our temperatures to deal with the extra speed. You could also just adjust your slicer to reduce your maximum flow, but realistically turning up the temp will do the same thing and not sacrifice any speed. Hope it helps. Mother. Mother. We've all been here. This is a filament wrap and even Victoria has decided that she's not a huge fan of them either. It happens. And traditionally speaking, it's kind of your fault. As an end user, if you happen to let the roll of filament go and it kind of unwinds a little bit, chances are it might be wound up. And when that ever occurs with us, we will actually let some of those coils actually fall off the spool and then we'll re-spool it manually just to be safe. If this roll of filament has never been off the printer and it was perfect from day one, it is technically possible for it to occur during the first couple of coils during production of filament. It's really unlikely, like really unlikely, but it's not impossible. Given that we can still see at least a few more turns on the roll, I'm gonna think that this is gonna be related to user error. It's a relatively easy thing to fix if you catch it in time. If you don't catch it in time, it will likely result in a failed print. And given that we can see a failed print on the table there, uh, something tells me they didn't catch it in time. But if you do see this and you can hear it, often you'll actually hear the filament getting tighter. You can pause your print, change the filament and undo that knot. But given that we have at least two wraps that it went under, chances are I don't think this occurred at the factory. But unfortunately, uh, as the internet does, it's, it's completely stolen. So that's cool, good job. My advice still stays the same, and my advice would be the same for this individual as well. We have a text on this one, though, saying, Woke up this morning to find unfinished print, and that the filament had trapped itself on the spool. Yeah, it's just all about better spool handling. It happens to me, even now, 15 years deep. I will be, you know, locking filament in, and it slips out of my hand. You just hear it go, Psh, 
as it unrolls itself a little bit. And you're just like, oh, well, here goes the next five minutes of my life. Thankfully, it's not that big of a deal. It's a really easy thing to fix. And outside of a lost print and some lost time, not really out a ton of hardcore maintenance, as far as maintenance is concerned, at least. Ah, yes, the dangers of doing work on an active 3D printer. This comes from our Patreon Discord, which if you want to join, you can join at the $10 tier or higher. Links are in the description down below. Patreon, YouTube channel members, Patreon, any of those work. Coming soon to Thangs and Printables as well. I really need to move that higher up in my docket. I'm sorry for those of you that want to support on those platforms. It is in my docket to do. This comes from member man of the sky who was doing some maintenance on his mark i think it's a 3.9 at this point but it's a mark 3 base and he's been going through the upgrade process and he has an active ptc heater inside of the enclosure that he built y'all figured out what happened here apparently his jacket decided that it was going to touch and melt to the heater that was turned on please don't do this but like please don't do this if you are going to work on a printer I not only want you to turn off the power, I want you to unplug it from the wall. I want you to take the power cord off the machine even though it's unplugged from the wall. It's the same way that if you're carrying around a Nerf blaster, I still want to see you have proper trigger discipline, like my buddy Nero does. I want you to be very certain that it is 100% off, because otherwise you might end up ruining some clothes. And thankfully, this is just clothing. It's a relatively easy thing to fix at the end of the day. And I mean, well, you could try to sew a patch in there, I guess. Honestly, I think he's just going to keep it because it's a kind of a, a, a hilarious reminder of what happens when you don't remember to do something. But at the same time, you need to be careful because if it is able to melt fabric, it is also able to cause damage to other things that are near it. Make sure that your PTC heaters are not near anything flammable. Thankfully, most clothing is not flammable. Assuming it doesn't have rayon in it, but I care not to get into that whole conversation about clothing and flammability. But man of the sky here is lucky. And I don't want to see this happen to you guys either. Please be careful because this is thankfully just clothing. It wasn't skin. Imagine if your skin touched that. You'd have one really weird burn to explain to friends and family. And the best way to solve that, unplug it, remove the power cord and put the power cord somewhere where you know that it is and is away from the printer. 3D printing folks, what can be the cause of this print? It's a Creality 3D printer. This is from Shant or at Shant.me. And they're representing someone like they, they have a friend who had a problem and then they, they post up and asked around. Reprinted 3D, Peter, uh, was super cool, tagged us in it, and we took a look at it. In my opinion, it is under extruding. There will be people that will say this is wet filament. I don't think that it's wet filament. Wet filament will look like Rice Krispies. This just looks like we're not getting the plastic when and where we need it to go. To me, I would look at running a steps per millimeter test, which is where you would mark about 100 millimeters of filament above your extruder, tell the printer to extrude 100 millimeters, and see, did you actually extrude 100 millimeters? If you did, great, that is correct, and we can look at another potential issue like a clogged nozzle. If it didn't, then we can go through and run the numbers to do the steps per millimeter calibration. There's a whole tutorial on it, and the math will link to it down below. And in fact, we will probably do a video coming up as we do some more basics videos in between some of the uh, larger videos that we do here on the channel. But part of the process of getting help is hopefully some back and forth. So I'm looking forward to hear back from Shant or the individual who actually has the printer so that we can figure out exactly what went wrong. Because I love a good challenge like anybody else, but I also like to figure out why. Trying to solve a solution and then never getting the answer, well, that's just mean. And we can see that someone did actually say the filament could need drying. And they replied saying that was the first thought, opened up a brand new filament, same results. I understand that a lot of people will push toward wanting to dry filament as pretty much the first thing. And to be clear, it's not bad to dry filament. You're not going to generally hurt it as long as you don't overheat it. But I would say at least nine times out of 10, if not like 99 times out of 100, it's not wet filament. Wet filament is a very, very distinctive problem. It is audible. It is visual. It is visual not only on the print, but it is visual when it is printed. You'll see little puffs of steam coming out of your hot end as it sounds like you're printing Rice Krispies. And I feel like most people would be able to understand 
that's not right. That doesn't sound right. Something there isn't right. I could be wrong, but that's my general understanding of wet filament. And as somebody that lives in a literal swamp, like it's 51% ambient humidity inside right now. And outside, I'm sure it's quite a bit worse. We do have some issues with PETG and being damp, but realistically, you notice it way before it becomes a massive problem. You'll see it start to string a little bit. If you want to dry it, you can, but alternatively, a blowtorch in two seconds also solves the problem. So in a case like this, I'm going toward mechanical more than I'm going toward the actual filament. Let me know what you guys think in those comments below. Bamboo Lab P1S weird problem I haven't seen before. Spongy print fails. First Reddit post. Cool. I'm having this really weird problem with my P1S. To me, it looks like under extrusion, but the problem is consistent. I got my printer about a month ago and starting having this issue maybe three days ago. It's doing these weird spongy prints probably 50% of the time right now. In one picture, you can see what the enclosure looks like when it fails. Plastic goes everywhere and the print gets smeared all around the plate. When it doesn't do this, the print turns out great. It's also weird that the prints start failing like halfway to done. The model is a fitting that I made in Fusion and I know it's not corrupted or anything like that. Not sure what to do and I haven't seen any posts with this specific problem yet, so I'm reaching out to see if anyone else has had this problem and if they're able to fix it. What they've tried so far, they've tried switching filaments. The picture below is with the same filament, pulling the hot end and cleaning it up. It's always a good one to do. Heating up the nozzle to 260 and doing a couple of purges. Also good to make sure that it's potentially not clogged. Doing full recalibration took 30 some odd minutes. That's pretty typical for a machine like a bamboo. Changing up print settings to run hotter. Eh, I mean, it's not bad, but it likely wasn't going to help here. Changing model orientation, same deal, likely not going to help. Changing seam orientation, again, likely not going to help. The printer is running all stock settings besides infill and all that. I've been watching 3D printing videos for like seven years at this point, not saying I'm a pro because I've only owned one for a bit, but I've tried most of the things I've seen on YouTube and they aren't fixing it. I've got a print on the plate right now and my last resort will be tensioning the belts and lubing everything. The maintenance recommended is to tension the belts every three to six months. So I think it's a bit too soon for that to be a problem, but it could have been half-assed from the factory. Not really sure. I would just love to have a working printer again. Please send help. So P1S prints are looking like dog water and well, the printer makes a bit of a mess, huh? Based on my YouTube comments, people would say that your printer looks like that and you deserve it because your printer looks like that, not because this is the mess that your printer makes when it fails a print. Funny how YouTube comments can be and how really upset fanboys can get. We are looking at a part with some pretty serious extrusion issues. I would agree that this is under extrusion and it looks like it's a partial clog or you are getting really, really close to the thermal softening limit of your PLA. If you have a P1S, which you do, or an X1 Carbon, these are enclosed printers. If you don't leave the door open, the internal chamber temp will actually get high enough that the material can soften it inside of the extruder and cause it to have some problems. If the machine is able to move faster though, it might be able to overcome that for a short amount of time. In fact, I just, I had a heat creep issue in my, well, new to me, X1 Carbon with ABS of all things, which is interesting. So it tells me that we're not running pure ABS with the brand that we're using because I've never had heat creep with pure ABS before. But for this particular piece, I think your orientation is good, but we are absolutely dealing with some sort of under extrusion. I would go ahead and pull apart the extruder and make sure that the hobbed gears inside the extruder are properly clean and there's not a lot of gunk built up on them. I would also make sure that when you are purging your nozzle that the filament is coming out dead straight. If it's coming out and curling and going all over the place, that likely means you have some sort of nozzle clog. And well, we don't know what brand of filament you're running, so you could be running some crappier filament. I don't know. We've seen garbage hidden in filament before. It's much harder to hide garbage in white filament, so it's likely not that, but I don't want to throw that 100% out the window. You have tried other filaments and it has been the same with them. So I'm going to go with either it's mechanical or it's environmental. If you are too hot in the chamber for some reason, that would cause the issues that we're seeing. Eventually the printer might be able to work through it, but it might struggle. We could also be very fast and we're not hot enough to be dealing with it, but you did try printing hotter. So 
that's a good move, not necessary here, because I really do think that it's more likely to be something that's mechanical, where the extruder gears are slipping rather than gripping. Check those extruder gears to make sure that they're looking right. And the next time this happens, touch the extruder. Okay, that's pulling off the front cover, touching the black plastic extruder. Do not touch the hot end, please, and make sure that the extruder is not hot to the touch. They can be very, very warm. And if your filament happens to be a little more sensitive, this could happen. I am thinking it's going to be an extrusion thing, so that's where I would go with. And I would also make sure that any of the Bowden tubes that you're running into that machine are free of gunk, free of buildup and all that. It's relatively easy to do that. You can go ahead and just take it off of the extruder and then manually feed filament through or kind of the jank way you can blow air through it and see if any garbage comes out. Just be careful. You will introduce some moisture into the line that will take a little bit to dry, but hey, if it's jank and it works, is it really that jank? Mistakes were made for my buddy 3D printing. I love you 3D printing. You have some awesome designs that I really need to start printing more often. I don't do it and I really need to, but let's go through it. Mistake number one, trying PETG supports for the first time on a big print. I don't know if that's a mistake. It's not that big of a deal. Forgot to turn off auto generate supports. Also not necessarily a mistake, but definitely gave you way more support on this model than you needed. Number three is didn't notice supports were added to impossible to remove areas. Definitely a mistake. And number four was tried to remove those supports mid print without pausing, which caused a crash. So this is 3D Printy's Prusa XL. I believe it's a five tool head. And we can see that he's messing around with multi-material. I assume it's multi-material like a PETG support with a PLA part. And we did have some failures here. He ended up saying that the second print with more reasonable support settings worked perfectly. And it is the Felenium Malkin, as one might say. We do still have some anomalies on the print but I don't, honestly, this file is so old. It could just be the files, not the highest resolution possible. And in fact, I think that 3D Printy's PETG might be a little bit damp. We can see back here the little bubbles in it. It might just have bubbles in the filament, but that is often what wet filament looks like. It will have those little dots in it. It might be wet, it might not be. It's not that big of a deal either way. The bummer with the XL at the moment, I'm sure they're going to fix it, but it's the current hot fix, if you will. If you are running input shaping, it does turn off crash detection. So when 3D Printy attempted to remove some of those superfluous support materials and the printer crashed into him, the machine doesn't know that it crashed and it's just gonna keep printing, which will create a layer shift. So the right move was to shut it off. Is that a bummer? abso freaking lootly that's a bummer. I hate that as much as the next person, but it's a good learning experience for everybody. While the auto supports inside of Prusa Slicer and others is generally fine, I think it's way more than what is needed. And the Felenium Malkin should not need a lot of supports if any. I believe it was designed to print support free, but I could be wrong. A lot of it is just bridgeable where the slicer says, nah, we can see when 3D Printy went through and actually painted on the supports. We see very, very few areas with real support. I promise you these areas up here didn't need it. This with how small the tree is likely didn't need it either, but it's a decent print, all things considered. And uh, I'm assuming this is quite a large print given how far down it is on the build plate. But that's a good thing to know. Slicers have the ability to paint on supports. And while you can just go ahead and give it the beans and use all the support material that you want, it adds time, complexity, and extra effort when it comes to the post-processing of the 3D print itself. It is great to go through and actually paint on those support material areas on your own. And it's great practice because Every slicer that I know of that lets you paint on support, lets you highlight areas with a certain percentage of overhang or a certain degree of overhang. And this enables you to see where the overhang is at the level where it should have support. But you might decide, ah, that's bridgeable. Nah, that's not that big of a deal. We're not gonna see that side of it anyways. There's no reason to put the support there. And make those judgments where the slicer is going to say, everything is important. We must support it. 
And as far as the auto support goes for Prusa Slicer, the one where it is in the painting and then you do auto supports, that I think actually does a decent job. A great example of this will be Stitch here. If we take a look at Stitch, it looks like a model that's going to absolutely need some supports. We can click on it, we go to the painting, and we can click automatic painting if we want, but instead I like to go eh, right around 35. We can look at the bottom of Stitch and see, okay, these are all the areas that the slicer thinks that we need support. Me, I would definitely be supporting the chin area. That little area there, I'm not going to touch it. The toes, uh, maybe, but they're probably okay. The armpit areas, likely fine. Underneath the legs here will absolutely need support. And in fact, I know a lot of this because we've already done one. Now this one is scaled up 300% for showing it a little bit easier on camera, but we did print one of these and we used a PETG with PLA supports. It came out great. It's the nice thing about having a zero interface layers. The, the parts look beautiful on all sides. We could just click automatic painting and the basic algorithm from Prusa is going to go through and paint support where it thinks it's necessary. And honestly, if anything, I think it's, it's a little, uh, it's a little weak. I would like to see more on the chin, but certainly I happen to agree with a lot of its thoughts and opinions on the rest of the model. What 3d printy did was just click everywhere and not support on build plate only or more specifically support for enforcers only and that's what we're doing here we are painting on a support enforcer it's what i love about the new slicers they become so easy that all right you want to add support freaking put it where you want you can just paint on support any way that you want and if you don't get it right hit control z and it goes away it's pretty awesome just like it's awesome if you leave a like and get subscribed if you haven't already. Because we do really enjoy doing these and we hope that you enjoy watching them. I do want to thank all of our channel member supporters and today's are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Because without them, these videos wouldn't be possible. Also, thanks 3D Printy for being in there too. You're a pretty awesome dude. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series. And right next to that will be my series on building my Prusa XL. Because... It was a really cool build. It had some challenges, but I really did enjoy it. The gummy bears helped out a lot. I'll see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care. Feels like we err on the side of disaster more than we err on the side of success, but I think that is the human mind. Oh, this much. All the girls don't feel like this. Ow, son of a bitch.